In this module, we're going to look critically at Locke's second treatise on civil government, which in essence encapsulates the ideology of the American Revolution and provides the basis for government in the United States. Before we do that, we're going to look at a timeline of the history of the British monarchy in the 17th and early 18th centuries and the factors shaping English politics during this period. This period coincides with the colonial period in North America, and we need to consider this as a backdrop to our study of colonial American history. Let's begin with Henry VIII. This king is known for initiating the English Reformation. This was a departure from the Roman Catholic Church, leading to the creation of the Anglican Church. Henry is also known for executing his wives, although he only ordered the death of two out of his six wives. Also, the rumor of his death due to syphilis is a myth and not supported by historical evidence. The English Reformation differed fundamentally from the wider Protestant Reformation started by Martin Luther in 1517. Luther's movement was a theological dispute, challenging corruption within the church and advocating different religious interpretations. In contrast, Henry's separation from the Catholic Church was not based on theological differences. He was a devout Catholic who sought an annulment from Catherine of Aragon, which the Pope refused to grant due to political alliances. This refusal led Henry VIII to declare himself the head of the Church in England, allowing him to annul his marriage and marry Anne Boleyn. This move was not only a significant religious shift, but also had political and financial implications, notably the dissolution of monasteries and appropriation of their wealth. Thus, the English Reformation was driven more by politics and money than theological reform. One thing to note is that while Henry remained faithful to Catholic dogma, a number of Protestant dissenters saw the break from the church as an opportunity to purify the English church from within, in other words, to make it more Calvinist. These dissenters, called Puritans, were unsuccessful, and by the time of the rule of James I had decided to abandon England and go into exile in Holland. They later applied for a charter to settle in America, and eventually found their way to New England. As their main concern was religious, the establishment of a new covenant polity, a city upon a hill, they called themselves pilgrims. Henry's personal life significantly influenced the religious landscape of England and Europe. His marriages and the subsequent births of his children, Mary, Elizabeth, and Edward, each played a role in England's religious shifts. Mary, a Catholic, attempted to revert England to Catholicism, leading to her moniker Bloody Mary for her persecution of Protestants. In America, the colony of Maryland, established as a haven for Catholics, was named after Mary. Elizabeth, a Protestant, succeeded Mary and adopted a more tolerant approach, allowing Catholics to practice their faith privately while excluding them from public life. For political reasons, Elizabeth never married, causing her to be dubbed the Virgin Queen. One may wonder whether she was actually a virgin, but the moniker influenced the naming of the first successful British colony in North America, Virginia. This era also saw significant international conflicts, such as the Spanish Armada's attempt to reassert Catholic dominance in England, which was thwarted, marking the beginning of the decline of the Spanish Empire and the rise of the British Empire. Elizabeth's reign ended without a direct heir leading to the accession of James I of the House of Stuart. James was King of Scotland, which was not then united with England, but he was unpopular in Scotland because of his faith. James's translation of the Bible into English, known as the King James Bible, is a noteworthy contribution, although it's ironic that this Bible commissioned by a Catholic ruler is exclusively embraced by Protestants today. Also in America, the colony of Jamestown was named after this king. When we come to James's successor, Charles, we have to begin deep in English history. In the 13th century, King John, of Robin Hood fame, 
known for his arbitrary and often tyrannical rule, faced rebellion from his barons who were frustrated with his heavy taxation and military failures. To appease them and restore peace, John agreed to the Magna Carta in 1215, a charter of liberties. It was groundbreaking because it placed the king under the law, marking a significant shift from absolute monarchical rule to a more constrained law-bound governance. The Magna Carta introduced several principles that were revolutionary for its time. It asserted that the king could not levy taxes without the common council of the realm, hinting at the need for broader consent, which later evolved into the role of parliament. It also established the principle of due process and the right to a fair trial, laying the groundwork for individual rights and legal standards. While the Magna Carta did not establish Parliament directly, it sowed the seeds for its development. The idea of involving the realm's nobility and clergy in decision-making, especially in taxation and legal matters, gradually led to a more formal and structured assembly. This assembly evolved into what we recognize as Parliament today, with a crucial role in governing and checking royal power. In the 17th century, Charles I came to the throne with the belief that he derived his power to rule from God, divine right. But beginning with the Magna Carta, the principle that the power of the king was constrained embedded the idea in English law that the king's power to rule came from Parliament, which was representative of the people. At first, Charles went along, but he was Catholic and supported the Catholic cause on the continent. When he ran out of money, he asked Parliament to raise taxes, but was refused. He then dissolved Parliament and went about raising taxes using another legal method. These actions led to severe conflict, evoking memories of the arbitrary rule that the Magna Carta sought to limit. His actions were seen as a direct violation of the principles of the Magna Carta, leading to the English Civil War. The conflict ultimately resulted in his execution and a temporary abolition of the monarchy. From this timeline, we can learn that there were two major issues affecting English politics in the 17th century. Religion. What religion would the state mandate? Recall the principle cuius regio eius religio and sovereignty, who has the right to rule and where does it come from? Religion and sovereignty. This will give us sufficient background to consider Locke's second treatise. Please proceed to the next lecture, which is a discussion of the content of Locke's second treatise. These videos will help you in your discussion assignment. If you have any questions, you can post them in the open forum discussion or contact the professor using Canvas email.